So, welcome to the next next lecture of the second unit of this course and in this particular lecture I will talk about two methods for solving nonlinear equations. The one is called regular falsi method, it is also called method of false position and another one which is just similar to this particular method and different a very little different from this one that is called second method. In the last class we have learned about bisection method for solving nonlinear equation. In the bisection method we take the next iterate as the midpoint of the two endpoints of the initial interval or earlier interval in any iteration. Just consider a particular scenario like we are having a function like this. So, here this is my point A, this is point B. So, A F A B A B Now, here we can see that the roots are close to B when compared to A. Now, if I use the bisection method in this particular example or in any other example where root is just close to one of the end point, in these cases bisection method does not work or having a does not work in a efficient manner. Efficient means in terms of convergence. The bisection method used to take a lot of iterations to converge to this particular solution. The, the reason behind it since we are having we are finding the midpoint in each iteration. So, like if root is close to one of the end point, we have to take quite large number of iterations to reach up to here, because first we will take this particular interval, then we will go here, then again we will take this one, then this one and so on. Can we have other methods where we do not use such a midpoint? instead of such a midpoint as the next iterate, we use some other uh, idea and we can have if root is close to one of the end point, our particular uh, our midpoint or our next iterate comes quite closer to the root, so that we can have a better convergence. So, regular falsi as well as second method use this idea where we do not use the midpoint, we will use some other weighted average instead of midpoint to find out the next iterate. So, let me introduce first regular falsi method and then I will go to the second method. So, in regular falsi method instead of taking the midpoint of the interval, we take the weighted average of f x given by w equals to f of b into a minus a p into b upon a b minus a p. So, consider the equation f x equals to x q minus x minus 1 equals to 0. If we check f at 1, it is coming out to be minus 1 which is a negative quantity and f 2 is coming out to be positive. So, hence we can say that a root will lie between 1 and 2. Thus, we can take the initial interval for the our regular falsi method or like in bisection method as 1 2, but here you just observe one more thing f 1 is coming minus 1, f 2 is coming 5. So, here I can say that uh, f 1 is quite close to 0 when compared to f 2 means 
the root is closer to 1 when compared to the 2. So, it is very likely that the root of the given equation is closer to 1 then x equals to 2 and if we use the bisection method we will calculate our c1 edge the midpoint of 1 and 2 that is 1.5, but here in the regular falsi method we find the weighted of f x w h f b into a minus f a into b upon f b minus f a. So, here if I take a equals to 1 and b equals to 2. So, f of a will become minus 1, f of b become 5. So, w will come 1.16666. Now, if I find out f w, it will be minus 0 0.578703, which is a negative number, while f 2 is positive. So, it means root will be between 1.1666 and 2. Repeating this process once again, I will get next if I assign it as a w equals to a and b remain as 2. So, I get the next it at as w equals to 1.2531. We can continue in the same manner to find the shorter interval in which the required root lie. Please notice that like in the bisection method here again we are reducing the length of interval in by taking care that root will always lie in the shorter interval which we are choosing in each iteration. So, if we talk about algorithmic way of this method given an initial interval a naught b naught set n equals to 0 in the step 2 calculate w n plus 1. So, like here if n is 0 we will have w 1. So, it will become f of b 0 a 0 minus f of a 0 b 0 upon f b 0 minus f a 0. In any n iteration it will become f b n a n minus f of a n into b n upon f of b n minus f of a n. Once we calculate this w, we will check in the next step as f of a n into f of w n plus 1. If it is 0 in this product, then the root will be w n plus 1. If it is negative, we will assign n to n plus 1 and w n plus 1 to b n plus 1 and our root will lie in the interval n plus 1 to b n plus 1. Basically, if you check if it is negative, it means root will be between n and w n plus 1. So, we are updating interval in this way. In the step 4, if root is not obtained in step 3 by this if condition, we check the condition f of w n plus 1 absolute value of this less than given threshold that is the permissible error in our method. If it is not, we will go back to step 2 if this is this particular inequality agreed then w n plus 1 will be the root like that. Consider the equation x square minus 3 x minus 3 equals to 0. We need to find the root of this equation using regular falsi method. So, what we will do or how this method will work let me explain here. So, equation is f x equals to x square minus 3 x minus 3 equals to 0. So, I need to find out a root of this equation. So, if I check f at 1, it is coming out to be minus 5 which is negative if I check f at 3. So, 9 minus 6 oh, at 3 it is coming exactly 0. So, let me take f is 4. So, at 4 it is 16 minus 15 so 1 which is positive. It means 
x star belongs to one and four. Now take a is one, b is four. So f a will become minus five. F B will be one. Calculate W one. So W one will be F B into A minus F A into B upon F B minus F A. So F B is one. Minus f n to b will be minus twenty, so it will be plus twenty upon f b minus f a. So one minus minus five, so one plus five will become six. So it is coming out twenty one by six. So twenty one by six will be somewhere around. If I take it, three point five. So now I will check. F at three point five. So if I check F at three point five, it is minus one point two five. Yeah, minus one point two five. So which is negative? Since it is a negative number, so what I will do? Root will lie between W one and B. So I will update edge W one. B edge will remain B. So my A will become. Three point five, B will become four, and then I will repeat this particular process. So if I repeat this process using the regular Falsi method, the next iteration will give me W is three point seven 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 eight. At this particular point, my F n will be point zero point zero six one seven three. B n will remain as four. F B N is one, so it means root will lie between three point seven 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 eight and four. If I use this process, I will get the next W H three point seven nine zero six nine eight, where F X N plus one or F W N plus one is minus zero point zero zero two seven zero four. In the next iteration, if I use this as my left point. And b equals to four as the right point. Next w comes out to be three point seven nine one two six two, and the value of f at this particular point is given by this particular number. So hence, since it is a negative number, again I will say that three point seven nine one two six two is my left point of the interval in which root lie, and the right uh, interval is four. So if I continue with uh, with the next iteration, I get 3.791287, and here I can see that 3.7912 is correct up to four decimal places, and hence uh, if I compare it with the previous iteration, previous value uh, the value of W in the previous iterations, and hence the root is numerical solution is 3.7913 or 12. Sorry. So Like in the bisection method, we are having some advantage of regular Falsi method, as well as some disadvantages. Advantages is it is a simple method, expected to converge to the exact root. It does not need any prior information, nor does it involves calculation to find derivatives of the function, which is a very beautiful advantage. We are not calculating any derivative because 
Further, we will describe some method like Newton's action and fixed point iterations in the next lectures where you will see that we need to find out derivatives of a function. This advantages are this method is a slow method and it is recommended to begin with a small interval in order to obtain an approximate root of the desired accuracy with lesser number of iterations. The next method we are going to discuss is second method which is a sort of regular falsi method only. If we start from the beginning, the intermediate value theorem tells us for each root p find a closed interval p 0 p 1, where p belongs to open interval p 0 p 1 and f of p 0 into f of p 1 is negative. Make sure these intervals do not overlap, but now instead of taking the midpoint as our next approximation, we find the second line joining p 0 f b 0 to f p 1 f p 1 and take the point where this line intersect the x axis as our next approximation p 2. This point is likely closer to the root p than the midpoint of the interval. Let me explain this method by taking a graphical example and then I will come to the algorithm of this particular method. So, like we are having this particular point A, this is the point B. So, and this is the function f x. So, like earlier this point will be A f of A, this will be B f of B. Now, in the bisection method what we were doing? We were getting the midpoint of A and B which will be somewhere here as our next iteration. However, in second method what we will do? We will find a line joining point A F A and B F B as our next iterate. So, it means this will be our next point. and then we will continue with this one. So, basically if I write let us say A is P 0 or if I denote in a P 0 as A, P 1 as B. So, how to find out next it that? So, if I find out the equation of this line that is basically P 0 F B 0 and P 1 F of P 1. So, line joining these two points can be given by y minus So, this is point x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2. So, a p 0 equals to y 2 minus y 1 that is f of p 1 minus f of p 0 upon x 2 minus x 1 that is p 1 minus p naught into x minus x 1 that is x minus p 0. So, this is the equation of the line joining point this point and this point. Now, what we will do? We will find out this particular point let us say P 2 is the point where this particular line intersect x axis. Okay, so, this is the equation of the line joining these two points. Now, if I define this point P 2 where this particular line intersect x axis, 
then I can write this equation as 0 since at this point y is 0 minus f of p 0 equals to f of p 1 minus f of p 0 upon p 1 minus p 0 p 2 minus p 0. Please note that I have replaced x by p 2. So, now if I want to modify this equation furthermore, I can write p 2 minus p 0 equals to minus f p 0 into p 1 minus p 0 upon f p 1 minus f p 0 or if I want to simplify it further then I can write p 2 equals to p 0 minus f of p 0 p 1 minus p 0 upon f of p 1 minus f of p 0. It means our next state p 2 can be calculated using this formula and this by continuing this we can get the iterations of second method. We got this formula and now the approximation p n plus 1 for n greater than 1 to a root of f x equals to 0 is computed from the approximation p n and p n minus 1 using this particular equation as I have drive on the board. If I explain this method using in an algorithmic manner, the input will be initial approximations p 0 p 1, a toll range toll and maximum number of iterations n naught. Output approximate solution p or a message of failure. In step 1, set i equals to 2, q 0 is f of p 0, q 1 is f of p 1 while i less than equals to n naught do steps 3 to 6 in step 3 p can be calculated as p 1 minus q 1 p 1 minus p 0 upon q 1 minus q 0. If p minus p 1 is less than tolerance then output becomes p and the method will stop otherwise set i equals to i plus 1 set p 0 as p 1 q 0 as q 1, p 1 as p, q 1 as f of p and step 7 if you will repeat this step 3 to 6 if you have achieved the maximum number of iterations that is n naught in step 7 it will give a message of failure that is the method fail after n naught iterations ok n naught equals to n naught. The process was unsuccessful means n stop. If we consider an example of this method, so for example, if we take f x equals to e raised to power x plus 2 raised to power minus x plus twice of cos x minus 6 equals to 0 on interval 1 to within a tolerance of 10 raised to power minus 6, then as I told you in the beginning my p 0 will become 1, p 1 will become 2 and from here I will get p 2 h 1.67830848477 by continuing this by using p 1 and p 2 I will get my p 3 by using p 2 and p 3 I will get my p 4 by continuing this in 8 iteration I will get the desired accuracy of 10 raised to power minus 6 and the correct root will be 1.829383 up to 6 decimal places. Order of convergence, 
for a continuous function second method converge more rapidly near a root its order of convergence is the golden ratio that is 1.618 so that limit k tends to infinity epsilon k plus 1 equals to constant epsilon k raised to power 1.618 Hence, you can notice in y section method we were having it as 1, but here it is 1.618. Hence, this method is having better convergence when compared to the y section method. Hence, we to, uh, earlier uh, told that uh, y section method is having linear convergence. So, here I will say that the method is having super linear convergence. As you can see, when we are finding the next states in second matter that is similarly to the regular falsi method. However, these two methods are different up to the assignments of the patterns only. Like in regular falsi method what we are doing? We are taking the inter uh, in each iteration the interval in such a way that root will lie in that particular interval. However, in this particular method what we are doing we are updating our p using previous two iterations like if i want to find out p3 i will use p1 and p2 i am not making any assignment of p1 and p2 to any other variables so hence these two methods are different only up to an assignment thank you very much